Okay, so we this is going to be the first of many videos on the topic of evolution, more particularly evolution by natural selection, which is what we're going to spend the majority of our time on. Um, but this can be, for some people, this can be a bit of a dirty word, right? Evolution. Evolution. Can be a dirty word for some people because you either have some sort of reason that you do not believe in it, uh, maybe just looking out your window and looking at the variety of life, you think that it's too complex or too um, too different to have evolved to be that way. Um, if you are one of these people, that's okay. I do want you to try to challenge your own beliefs, and not only in this topic, but in any topic. Always challenge your own beliefs. So I would like you to make your claim. I'm going to make my claim. Uh, and that claim is evolution is an established scientific fact. That's my claim. Um, it's not a very not a very controversial claim in uh, scientific circles. However, when dealing with students, uh, you know, sometimes that can be uh, it can be a controversial topic. Okay, now I now I want you to write your claim. It doesn't have to be my claim. You can make a you can make your own claim. You can say I believe that evolution is impossible, right? If that's what you want to put. I'd also like you to put some evidence for your claim. So I could I could give you fossil evidence. I could give you uh, DNA evidence. I could give you embryology. Uh, and there's there's many lines of evidence for. There's also experimental evidence. Uh, experimental evidence. Uh, I could give you many, 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 many different uh, lines of evidence, and we are going to discuss some of them. This is not all of them. We will discuss these. But this is not all of them. I'd also like you to put your reasoning. Why do you believe that a certain piece of evidence links to a certain to your claim that you made? So, claim, evidence, reasoning. I'd like you to pause, maybe ponder it for a bit, um, particularly if you're somebody that maybe doesn't. Uh, has a lot of, has some of these questions about evolution, right? I'd like you to write those down um, and, and give me the evidence for the reason that you believe that your claim might be true, and I'm going to try and address that claim uh, through the course of these next videos. Okay, first, I want to talk about evolution as it is and as some people think it is, which is, and I'm going to put a stairway up here. This is how many people believe evolution is. They believe that we had these earlier forms, right? I've taken some images from Google here. We had these earlier forms of life um, that over time have been kind of, uh, you know, um, their imperfections have been kind of uh, carved away and you've ended up with a superior life form ultimately, which is, of course, the humans, the perfect form. Um, I kind of want to to, to break this myth. That's, that's how a lot of people see it. I see evolution, and particularly natural selection, as more of a sieve. Let's see if I can write this correctly. Sieve or strainer. You've probably seen one of these in, in your parents' kitchen. Um, in which the sieve, which is time and environment, time uh, environment, is kind of, uh, takes this underlying variance, right? We have variation. It's in different, in species. We've always had variation. Without it, evolution would never have been able to occur. We have genetic variation. I'm going to put genetic just to make sure. Genetic and phenotypic variation, meaning that each of these animals uh, displays different traits differently. But this genetic variation is kind of put through the test of, uh, uh, of this sieve, the sieve of natural selection. And over time, you see a lot of these traits uh, get lost. They get caught in this sieve here, right? And what comes out are different species, right? Not just us. Um, so, in short, you have animals with tons of variation coming through the sieve, and through time, we end up with different species. Now, are these species truly different? Well, first we need to define a species, which is going to be a later video. Um, but yes, yeah, sometimes the species can remain unchanged through, through, through a large amount of time. Um, but this genetic variation... I would like for you, as we go through the topic of natural selection, to think of this genetic variation as the underlying principle of everything we talk about. All these animals, all this variation these animals have get put through this sieve. And over time and selection processes, you end up with the creatures you see around you today. Now, um, which one of these is most 
evolutionarily adapted to its environment. You could say humans are the best adapted. But roaches have been here for quite some time, right? They've been on the other side of the sieve for quite some time passing through. Uh, okay, so I've drawn this hand. I got a little carried away because I started drawing and I just kept going. But I drew this hand. You guys probably know why I want to talk about the, uh, as Mr. Anderson in his video puts it, the five fingers of evolution. Of evolution. So, basically there's an underlying uh, principle to evolution that kind of, uh, it has to be there for anything to occur. Um, so I'm going to start with the middle finger here. This finger right here, which is mutation. This finger represents mutation. Remember, these are mechanisms of evolution. Now, without this middle finger, without mutation, without mutation, think of mu middle for mutation, middle finger. Nothing can occur. Nothing on this list can occur. So it's kind of a very underlying principle to all of this. Um, so I'll, now that I've got that out of the way, I've got mutation out of the way, let's go ahead and start with this small finger. This small finger here represents small population size. So small population size, you can think of that because it is your little finger. Small population size will lead to evolution. Small population size will lead to evolution. Uh, when you look at this finger, and we'll talk about that more in depth when we talk about genetic drift and everything like that. The ring finger, you should be thinking of marriage. I'll draw a little ring down here on my finger. You should be thinking of mating. Particularly that non-random mating contributes to evolution. Uh, your forefinger, you should be thinking of things moving in to a population or out of a population. This is known as the gene flow. And the most important one that we're going to talk about is this thumb right here, which represents natural selection. Natural selection. Meaning, nature votes thumbs up or thumbs down for creatures to enter, uh, or for uh, rather alleles to be favored or not favored in a population, basically by not allowing them to reproduce in said population. So let's review again. Small finger represents small population size. Uh, middle finger, or uh, the, I'm sorry, the ring finger here, the ring finger represents non-random mating. The middle finger represents mutation. Uh, and the forefinger represents uh, individuals moving into or out of, into or out of immigration and emigration, a population. Okay, um, which is also known as gene flow, a good word to remember. Uh, the thumb, of course, thumbs up or thumbs down. This represents natural selection. This is stuff you already should have seen in the video, but I will link that video on Schoology anyways because I think it's a very good video uh, to discuss uh, evolution and particularly the mechanisms of evolution. Again, the main one we're going to be talking about is natural selection, but all of these uh, can lead to evolution in a population. Uh, remember, evolution is simply a change in alleles. I'll go ahead and define this right here. Evolution. Change. In allele frequencies. Ah, allele frequencies. In a population over time. Okay, that's going to be it for this video.